I just don't see how Isaac Newton was made out to be such a great guy. His whole life, he was a complete scumbag. His father died before he was born, so he grew up an only child until his mother remarried. But Newton continued sleeping in her bed. He resented having to share the attention of his mother with his new siblings and father so much that he threatened to kill them all by burning down the house as they slept on many occasions. But biographers say, surely that was nothing more than the outburst from a spirited young child deprived of the comfort of his mother's bed. Newton didn't play with other children growing up or have any friends and often abused his little stepbrother, beating him physically. Newton's uncle got him into the King's School at age 12, where they taught no math, only Greek and Latin, until he was 17 years old. Newton was such a poor student that his mother pulled him from school to be a farmhand on the land he was to inherit. It wasn't long before the headmaster of the King's School went to Newton's mother to persuade her to let Newton return to school to finish his studies. He insisted Newton was a genius and moved the young schoolboy into the headmaster's personal quarters to keep a better eye on him. I think it was just to molest him easily, easier. Newton became the top student, even though he spent most of his time visiting taverns and playing cards for money. Biographers say, Indeed so flushed with money was he that he made loans to students and kept careful notes of who they were and how much they borrowed. Newton also invested heavily in the South Sea Company. Their most significant trade was slaves, making him very wealthy. Newton started Trinity College, thanks to his uncle, where he promptly dropped out after having claimed to have invented calculus and being accused by a fellow student of stealing their idea. It was on this two-year break Newton did his best work, such as the law of gravitation using calculus a form of math no one really knew, to explain and prove his work. It was this great work his friends used to convince the headmasters to allow him to return to Trinity College. Newton considered himself to be one of a select group of individuals who were specially chosen by God for the task of understanding biblical scripture. In a manuscript he wrote in 1704, in which he describes his attempts to extract scientific information from the Bible, Newton estimated that the world would end no earlier than 2060. In predicting this, he said, This I mention not to assert when the time of the end will be, but to put a stop to the rash conjectures of fanciful men who are frequently predicting the time of the end, and by doing so bring such sacred prophecies into discredit as often as their predictions fail. Newton studied and wrote extensively upon the Temple of Solomon, rewriting the history of the chronology of ancient kingdoms based off his observations. Newton's primary source of information was the description of the structure given within kings of the Hebrew Bible which he translated himself from Hebrew. Newton didn't know Hebrew, so I think maybe he put the Hebrew Bible in a hat like Joseph Smith did. Newton placed a great deal of emphasis upon the interpretation of the book of Revelation, writing generously upon this book and authoring several manuscripts detailing his interpretations. Unlike a prophet in the true sense of the word, Newton relied upon existing scripture to prophesize for him, believing his interpretations 
would set the record straight in the face of what he considered to be so little understood. Newton lost heavily when the slave trading South Sea Company collapsed and had a mental breakdown after his lover, Nicolas Fadio de Dulio, dumped him. When Newton overcame his mental breakdown, he entered into politics with some success and secured the job of reforming the Royal Mint. This very important position allowed him to play a crucial role in the much needed job of reforming England's finances. As warden of the Royal Mint, Newton made himself justice of the peace in all counties so he could act as judge, jury, and dispense summary justice using evidence he personally gathered. I couldn't find the names of these people anywhere, so I suspect there was critics, enemies, or people that held key positions in the government that he wanted to have replaced. The counterfeiting was high treason, punishable by being hanged, drawn, and quartered. Newton's corrupt handling of the royal mint resulted in a silver in a Newton's corrupt handling of the royal mint resulted in a silver shortage, as silver coins were used to pay for imports while exports were paid for in gold, effectively moving Britain from the silver standard to its first gold standard. The same people that owned the Federal Reserve and the Royal Mint today owned the Royal Mint back then. And only the most evil of people are put in charge of printing money. If Newton says the world is round, I'm going to believe it's flat. If Newton says the world is flat, I would believe it was round.